Hi, my name is Dan Bentley. I'm a private caterer in the Worcester area. The name of the catering business is Daniel's Catering. Uh, we, I'm here tonight to talk to you about some slicing techniques, talk about some knives, how to take care of your knives, and do's and don'ts to maintain the quality of your knife. Uh, the first thing we have here is the different kinds of knives. This is a stainless steel knife. This is a carbon steel knife. And this is a combination of the two, which is a carbon stainless. It's an alloy between the two. Uh, the advantages and disadvantages. A carbon steel knife, as you can see, gets stained very easily. Dirty, it rusts up on you. Uh, it's very easy to sharpen, and it's very easy to keep sharp. But it loses its edge very quickly, so you have to constantly sharpen it. The stainless steel knife, on the other hand, has a great edge when you buy it, and it maintains that edge for quite a while. But once it loses that edge, it's very tough to get the sharpness back and to keep it sharp. Now, the, the alloy, the carbon stainless, is a combination of the two. It sharpens very easily. It maintains the edge very easily. And you can keep you know, continually sharpening it. Uh, the only disadvantage is a knife like this will run 30 40 up to $50 a knife, so they're expensive. Uh, brand names, the best in the business I imagine is a Henkel from uh, Germany, which is this here, which is my boning knife. Uh, the best made in the United States, I believe this is in Southbridge, Mass, it's called a Connoisseur brand. Okay, now let me show you how to sharpen your knives. Uh, this is your sharpening stone. Uh, I prefer to use water on top of the stone. Uh, some people prefer oil, and some people prefer to leave it dry. Water gives it a little lubrication as you're sliding the knife across a stone. You want to keep the same amount of strokes on both sides of the knife. Uh, a slight angle up as you're running it across a stone. Now I'll do about five strokes on each side first. Flip the knife over, move the stone, and just a slight angle up and bring it all the way down across the knife. Over here we have a steel and this does not actually sharpen the knife but it hones the edge. It keeps that edge sharp. As you're running the blade ar across the stone you'll get little metal burrs and this being a little bit magnetic will pick up those burrs and give you a nice clean edge. Very simple. Again, maintaining a little angle as you're doing this. Uh, if you feel more comfortable, you can do it away from you. I've got scars to show that I've made a couple mistakes. So you can get real good and impress your neighbors. Okay, a couple of things to remember about maintaining your knives. Uh, the rule number one is a sharp knife is a safe knife. If you try cutting something with a dull knife, it doesn't cut right through, you try and push it a little harder, that's when your knife is going to slip and you'll get your fingers. Uh, and if the nasty should happen and you cut your finger with a sharp knife, it's a nice clean cut, it'll heal very quickly, bleed like heck for a little while, but it'll heal nice and, nice and quick. A dull knife will give you a, a gash and it'll be a worse cut. Okay, a couple of do's and don'ts you don't want to put your knife in the dishwasher. The high heat will not help your blade any. Uh, another thing is a serrated knife on bread. You want to use a serrated knife for whatever reason. A, a knife like this, cutting bread, just it dulls the knife very quickly. Uh, when you're cutting some vegetables, you don't want to drag the knife, after you've cut a couple, drag the knife across the board like that. That'll dull your knife. You don't want to spend time sharpening your knife if you don't have to. Let me show you the difference between a sharp knife and a dull knife. Like I said, a sharp knife is a safe knife. Uh, I have, again, this stainless steel that I showed you earlier. And this is a dull knife. This is a, your $5.99 special. Uh, you go, and this is what every housewife has. You want to cut your tomato, cut some slices. You can't cut through the skin very easily. You've got to push down. You're squashing your tomato to cut through. Whereas if you're using the sharp knife, it's all in one motion. Very simple. Cuts right through the skin without much problem. 
and I've, I've worked with guys who've been in the business for 10 years, and they take a very sharp knife, and the same thing. They go like this. They, you know, it's sharp, it's cutting right through, but he's doing the work, not the knife. You let the knife do the work. It's nice and easy. Nothing a little bit of practice can't cure. So you've got some nice, even slices. Okay, now we'll show you how to do various slices, dices, mints, julienne cut. I, I suppose everyone's heard the julienne cut, so we'll start with that first. Uh, we'll start with a potato. The first thing you want to do is get a flat edge to work on. This potato is nice and flat, so you don't have to, it won't be rolling around or anything like that. Okay, you want to start out, get a thickness that you like, and slice along the line like this. Uh, maybe I should say something about your fingers. You, you would like to guide the blade of the knife with the backs of your fingers and keep your fingers upright so you don't lose them. Again, I got plenty of scars to show where I messed up. And you want the same thickness or kind of s French fry cut it w is one way. There are various size juliennes. Uh, if you want it to be precise and have it very accurate, you, you, there's more waste. So you give yourself a nice rectangle, and then, like that again, guiding with your fingers. You don't want to lose them. Uh, let me see. Now, we can do a smaller Julienne, same way. Let me just get rid of these. And the zucchini, if you like a s even smaller, you same thing, you start smaller. Cut off the ends. Get yourself, the first cut would be to get yourself a flat working area. And you just cut it a little thinner. And you've got a thinner piece of zucchini here. And again, you want it square. So you've got a smaller julienne there as opposed to your French fry cut. Now we'll go into a brunoise or fine dice, which is very simple from the julienne. If you want a, a fine dice, you just take your fine julienne and again guide it with your fingers, lay it down flat, and that's your fine dice. Uh, a larger dice, you take your larger french fry size potatoes and again, just square them up. Very simple. Okay, so you've got your julienne, your finer julienne, and your renoise. Now an onion. This is what everyone wants to know how to cut. Again, very simple. Same rules. You want to cut it in half first so you've got a flat area to work with. Now, if you're cutting onions for soup or for hamburgers or hot dogs or what have you, you'll want a different size. So, you've got your onion here. You, if you'd like a fine dice, you give a couple of cuts here. all up. This is going to be a very, very fine. And then you slice like so. Many slices to give you a fine, fine dice of the onion. Now you hold it together again, leaving your fingertips on the onion. It'll take a little getting used to. And if you have to drag your knife across the board, flip it over. Now for soups, chowders, if you want a larger cut, it's the same thing. You might want to cut it this way just once. Cut it this way three, maybe four times. And then two or three times this way. So you've got yourself a finer, finer dice. 